So question eight says figure one is a graph showing the trajectory of a rugby ball. The height of the ball above the ground h meters has been plotted against the horizontal distance x meters measured from the point where the ball was kicked. The ball travels in a vertical plane. The ball reaches a maximum height of 12 meters. Let's mark that on the diagram. So that there is 12 meters. It hits the ground at 0.40 meters from where it was kicked. So that's 40 meters. But because of the symmetry of the curve, we know that that's also 20 meters. So that point there we can see now is 20, 12. It says find the quadratic equation linking h with the x that models this situation. So we're told that this is a quadratic. So that's a really important point because it means we can write this in complete square format because we know the coordinates of the vertex. So it's going to make that a little bit easier for us. So we know that h equals k times x plus a squared plus b. So because we know the coordinates of the vertex are 20, 12, this means that it's equal to k x minus 20 squared plus 12. But now we need to find the value of k. Well, we've got another point we can use. Another two points, in fact. We've got this one here, or the origin. So we sub in whatever we think is going to be easiest. Well, this one here had coordinates 40, 0. And that one's the origin. So what I'm going to do is let h equal 0. And x equals 0, I'm going to use the origin because that's much easier to sub in. Which means that 0 equals k times 0 plus uh, 0 take 20 squared. Sorry. So like that, plus 12. Which means that 0 equals 400k plus 12. Which means that 400k equals minus 12 means that k equals minus 12 over 400 12 over 400 equals minus 3 100 is all minus 0 0.03 so finally writing the quadratic out that means that h equals minus 0 0.03 x minus 20 squared plus 12. So now for the next part, it says the ball passes over the horizontal bar of a set of rugby posts that is perpendicular to the path of the ball. The bar is three meters above the ground. So the best way to do this is to draw a diagram. So we've got the origin here and we're kicking the ball like that, as we saw before. So that matches the quadratic we saw before. And we've got a rugby post here where the bar, we're looking at this from the side, where the bar is there, and that is three meters high. So we want the greatest distance where it just clears that bar. So we're gonna move this along like that until it just clears, i.e. just skims it, so there it is there. So we see that we want the distance from the origin when the ball is just at three meters, when it just clears that. So the horizontal distance, which is what it asked for, is this distance here. So that's the distance we're being asked to find. So it's a simple case of just subbing y equals 3 into the quadratic to find the x distance when the ball's at 3 metres. So it's just really a case of setting the y value of the quadratic, or in this case, we see it's the h value of the quadratic to be 3. So h equals 3, which implies minus 0.03 x minus 20 squared plus 12 equals 3. And now taking 12 from both sides, we get minus 0 0.03 x minus 20 squared equals minus 9. So dividing both sides now by minus 0 0.03, we get x minus 20 squared equals and minus 9 divided by minus 0 0.03 we'll do on the calculator. So minus 9 divided by minus 0 0.03, which is 300, 
which means that x minus 20, if we square root both sides, equals plus or minus root 300, which is equal to, that's root 100 root 3, equals plus or minus 10 root 3. Therefore, x equals 20 plus or minus 10 root 3. Now we can discard the, ten, uh, the 20 minus 10 root 3 because that's for the greatest difference. So finally, that implies that distance equals 20 plus 10 root 3 since we want greatest distance. So that distance there, 20 plus 10 root 3 is what we've just worked out. So that's that part. So part C, give one limitation of the model. Well, a limitation is that it doesn't take into account air resistance. Doesn't take into account air resistance. However, there's loads of other limitations as well. So it models the goalpost as being an infinitely thin bar. So actually the bar of the goalpost will have thickness. The ball won't be a particle. The ball will have thickness as well. So there's loads of limitations. But the most obvious to me is that it doesn't take into account air resistance like I've written there. So there's a few different ways of doing this question. But I've went for, uh, I've went for the one that I think is the easiest, the most obvious to go through. For more videos like this, subscribe to our YouTube channel. And to find out more about our Skype tuition and revision courses, go to alevelmathsrevision.com.